granddad went on strike for three months so he didn't have to work a seven day a week. And that's nearly 50 years ago. You should try the hours some people work at the hospital. And they're mending lives and not cars. <sighs> One or two of them are good at wrecking lives and all. But as we're not mentioning any names, I won't mourn about him bailing out before it was time to give you your driving lessons. Good. If you like, I'll take you when I finish work. Whenever that is. Okay. Tell. Keep your chin up, kid. See you later. Mm. Did I hear you get up in the night? Couldn't sleep. Oh, don't go making yourself ill. I've got to talk to Martin, ma'am. I'm just trying to work out what to say. Right. Do you know what I think you should say? Nothing. But if I don't try and make up, he'll think I don't care. And he's got no one else to talk to. He knows you care. And when he gets round to thinking, he'll realise that, that him knowing about Todd wouldn't have made any difference to anybody. Todd would still be gay. He'd still have finished with Sarah. And what happened to the baby? It would still have happened. We did all that, I think, Kev. Sally finally moved your bed over, has she? <laughs> something of this business, that's all. Tommy, if we've got a problem, I think I should know about it, seeing as I'm going to be working here full time. <laughs> Do you want to get on with this service then, eh? I'm going to go and see Rita about these leaflets. I thought you were going to sort it out. Me too. If she starts getting on my back, I'm going to show her a new use for jump leads. Do you know what I mean? Did I hear Kevin opening the garage just now? We've got so much work on it. just shows you what you can do with a bit of initiative. Which is why I'm here. I was just wondering if you could put these in your newspapers. An advert? Uh, we're only scratching the surface of the market round here. Still, if Kevin's already opening the garage on a Sunday... Rita, with all due respect, that's why you're still running a backstreet news agent at an age where you should be putting your feet up. I don't want to be putting my feet up. No, and we don't want to just make do. I mean, tech schools for a start. Rosie is going to do so much better at Oak Hill than she ever would at Weatherfield High. So you set on sending her private? Oh, yeah. It's all about potential. Hers as well as ours. Well, sounds like you've got it all mapped out, Salah. Oh, yes, it's only just the beginning. Oh, you're friendly with Archie Shuttleworth, aren't you? Well, um... You don't know where he gets his hearses serviced, do you? Well, it's a shame he's not doing the funeral tomorrow. I could have had a word for you. Oh, I'm sorry, Audrey. I, I just didn't think. No, it's OK. Next time you see him, that'll be fine. Oh, I wish I'd had some business cards printed. Still, never mind. He knows where to find us. Look, there's 200 leaflets there, and I'll bring some more around later. Thanks, Rita. Mum thinks I'm balmy for coming. So why did you? Because I wanted to see you. Look, about the birthday card. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I know. You said. Look, it's not a good time, Katie. When is it going to be a good time? Look, I will say sorry as many times as you want me to. You know, actually, to catch up on the gossip. <sighs> what gossip? I had a bit of a go at your mate, Carl. He's not a mate anymore. You know that. A bit of a go? Yeah. I'll turn into your dad. The man that messed up my daughter's life was stood in front of me and couldn't help myself beating the hell out of him. Don't compare yourself to him. I'm proud of you. Mm, I'm not. It's probably cost me my job. I could talk to Carl, ask him not to say out. I thought you two weren't still mates. Oh, we're not, but I could but... just... It's none of your business, Katie. Not anymore. Well, lads, before you get stuck in, can you put this up for us? What is it? Ta-da! New sign. Webster's Auto Centre. What's wrong with Garage? Well, Garage is a small town. We're advertising, too. It's all part of our new approach. We need a mission statement and all. A what? Well, I've been reading all about it in the books, about the best businesses have a mission statement, an aim. Like Star Trek, to boldly go and all that. Exactly. And I thought you two might have some ideas. I don't do ideas, I do cars. And what's this? Flaming buses? This is a wind-up, innit? Well, we can do buses and commercial vehicles. They're just 
cars, but bigger. It'll take more than a... What do you call it? A mission statement? Well, it'll take more than a mission statement to get a double-decker on that ramp. <laughs> How about there'll be no fuss when we service your bus? Hey, time run, that's great, isn't it, Kev? Yeah, it would be, yeah, but Tommy's got a point. We've no space for out like that. Well, we can always look for a new premises. Or uh, if it's a wrecker or a double-decker, you were meant to bring it to Webster's Auto Centre. <laughs> I'm on a roll, me. Hey, Tyrone's got the right attitude. We need to embrace new ideas, not rubbish them. OK, embrace this. You don't just go announcing new ideas without talking to me and Tyrone, or else we won't do them. So when you decide to let us know what you're planning, we'll be in the pub. Oi, come on. Great. I'm going to see Sarah. All oh, right. I bet your mummy's missed you. Yes, you have. You'll go see her, though. No, I'm working. I think. You think? Mm. Yeah, it all depends if Carl Foster reports me. Oh, uh, Todd's friend. Mm. Why should he do that? Because I had a word with him about what happened to Sarah. So? So? I punctuated every sentence with a kick in the ribs. <laughs> Good effort. Any damage? David, it's not funny. Hasn't that man done enough without risking your job for him? I wasn't thinking about my job. Or out else. Well, I'll see you later. See ya. You what? You slept with him on your first date? Yeah. I know this sounds a stupid question, but why? Well, I know this sounds a stupid answer, but why not? You hardly know him. Self-respect and... You can't love him. Self-respect and... Where's tacky? Self-respect. And you don't do that sort of thing. You mean you don't? Well, neither do you. Well, you didn't. Well, I did with Kieran. Anyway, it just happened. We kissed. And I thought kissing's for kids. And I'm not a kid anymore. Well, he certainly isn't. He must be well over 40. Experienced. And that's another thing. Now you'll be a notch on his bedpost. Well, I was thinking he'd be more of a notch on mine. You're not the least bit sorry about this, are you? Well, why should I be? We're both free agents. But is he Mr Right? He's Mr Right now. And that's close enough. It's ages since I've been with a fella. Who's this? Danny Baldwin. <sighs> so need to trust me on this. He's never going to fancy you quite as much as he fancies himself. Typical southerner. Gotcha. Yeah? You know, lads? Cheers, Kev. If it's a car, or even a lorry, bring it to Webster's. You won't be sorry. <laughs> Please tell me you're not going to go along with all this. Look, you only get the latest ideas. I get them for breakfast, tea, a lot. She was even talking to me through the toilet door yesterday. Eh? Hey. So tell her to take a running jump, it's your garage. What? Oh, more work equals more money. Hey, Shakespeare, this'll wipe the smile off your face. We're gonna be doing 24-hour call-outs. Yeah, and what's the problem with that? We already do call-outs. During working hours, not at night. Look, can we talk about this after we close today? We've got a load on today. I'm not doing out till I know where we stand. Sorry. Have you seen this? Aaron Kirk have gone for a day out. Oh, heck. I've been called in to cover the shift. I needed her to look after Chess. I have to tell Steve I can't work. What? You know, I never told you what a good mother you were to my Leanne. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. I am having a nice, quiet day. On my own. OK. I don't know what you're on about. You want me to look after Chesney? What a good idea. Thanks, Jan. You're a star. Uh, hey, I never said I'd do it. I'd have to leave him on his own. Matches. Sharp knives. I'm all that poor little lad's got. I need to work to buy him some new shoes. <gasps> Give over. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, it's not like I can sit here reading my paper and having to listen out for fire engines and ambulances. Magic. Oh, uh, you're a cheeky. Hey, how are you doing? All right. Hi. All right, all right, love. Hiya, darling. Hi. Same again? Yeah, go on, then. All right, good. Turns out I'll have a bottle of lager, please, love. If I didn't tell you how much I enjoyed Friday night, let me tell you how much I enjoyed Friday night. Me too. You're settling in OK, I see? Yeah, very much at home, thanks. In fact, if home had been as good as this, I'd have never moved it. Why did you up sticks? Jealous husband? Lone sharks? Vengeful woman? Yeah, all of them, yeah. 
It was either Weatherfield or the Foreign Legion. So, do you fancy doing something tonight? Like? Like, uh, don't know, go for a meal or something? We could stay in, get pizza. Good, yeah. How about uh, my place, then? Yeah, you bring the pizza, I'll get the wine. Decent stuff. Well, don't go wasting good wine on me. I can't imagine anything good's wasted on you, mate. You know, him walking in just now, give me the butterflies. Maybe he is Mr. Right after all. Her mum has told me she's not very well. <laughs> she doesn't understand. No. I shouldn't have left him. Sorry, sweetheart. Billy. Billy? I can't pretend that's not his name just because Todd picked it. How can he have any dignity without a name? Yes, Absolutely. I shouldn't have left him on his own. Not after everything that's happened, it just doesn't seem right. Leaving him with all those strangers who don't care. All the other babies crying. Sweetheart. Billy isn't there anymore. If I still shouldn't have left him. Billy's still my baby. I'm still his mum. When we were leaving, I kept listening for him crying. I know it's silly, but it was, it was just so perfect. Hey, Sarah. My dad's an hero, you know. He gave that car the right seeing her. The Undertaker's looking after Billy, my darling. He'll take him to the chapel of rest. It is so peaceful. <laughs> you know, if you like, we can go and see him there. You let them blackmail you? If we want them to work round the clock, we've got to pay them decent money. And if I hadn't agreed, they'd still be in the pub now. Like I said, blackmail. Tommy? Tommy, Tyrone, have you got a minute? Looks good, eh? Yeah, that's smashing. Hey, Kevin says you want paying for being on standby and then more money if you get called out. If you want me sat by a phone waiting for it to ring, I want paying. Yeah, but it might take time to get established. We might not get a few call-outs for the first few weeks. It's not our problem. No. All right, until we get sorted, then Kevin will do them all. Hey? Well, we can't afford to pay Tommy and Tyrone for sitting on the backsides, can we? <laughs> Wondering how Sarah was. Well, she's home. Good. Is Todd okay? It's all right. I'll tell him that you asked. Don't bother. Why are you talking to her? Nick, it was Todd's baby and all. No, no, it was Sarah's baby. Tim it was just a way of showing the world he's a real man. Oh, come on. Just because he's gay doesn't mean he's not grieving. Look, if Todd cared about anybody but himself, Sarah would be all right now. You don't know that. Anyway, if it was something to do with Todd, how do you think he's going to feel? I don't care. Neither should you. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. Uh, where's Chesney? Having a bath. How the heck did you manage that? I told him he smelt like you. Oh, sir. He's not even at school tomorrow. No? Training day. Do you fancy throwing a sickie? Look, it's one thing giving up an afternoon of sitting around my flat to come here, but I'm not risking my job. I was going to suggest we had a bit of fun. I mean, neither of us are getting much of that these days, are we? Oh, what do you want about you? Well, you used to love a day out. Me, you and the girls. We could take Chesney. Where were you thinking of, like? 
Surprise? Oh. The last time you surprised me with your day out, it was so I wouldn't be in when the bailiffs came for the telly and the video. Aye, well, you don't have to worry about me getting up to out anymore, do you? Leslie, I think I'll always worry about you. Right, go on then. We'll give the lad a proper Battersby day out, yeah? Yes. Hello? Gran? Gran? Hello? Who the hell are you? I'm the bloke who lives here, darling. Your turn. No, I'm sorry, but I live here with my baby. Where's my gran? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. The factory girls have put you up to this, haven't they? I want to know what you're doing in my house. Your house? No, look, I'm renting this from a Mrs. Hunt. She lives up the street with her daughter. Now, if you don't mind, I'm expecting someone. Yeah, well, I am sorry, but you're going to have to leave. No, no, I've got a contract, darling. It is you who is leaving. Stop calling me, darling. It's Tracy. Well, then, Tracy, darling, go and sort it out with Grandma. Well, I have been round there. My family are out. Now, if you don't mind, I'm taking my baby upstairs to her bedroom to change her. No chance. Get what you need for tonight and pick up the rest of your stuff tomorrow. OK? Patrick, it's 10 Rochdale Road, name of Thomas. Oh, I hope you're not in a hurry, love. I haven't got anything for half an hour. No, I'm supposed to have nipped back to it flat. I'm over at Gale's. You don't know about the funeral. I've not had it. No, it's tomorrow, one o'clock at St Christopher's. And they weren't going to tell Todd? But don't they realise he's suffering just as much as they are? More, if anything. Yeah, they're blaming him for what's happened. You know, the upset and everything. Well, like he hasn't been to hell. Maria, he's my son and I can't say anything to comfort him. Them lumping the blame on his shoulders doesn't help. He's doing that to himself. Yeah, but he is. Well, it's dead caring, I know that. Todd's always been great with me. He knows what it's like to be an outsider with that love. Well, could you go and see him and tell him some of that? He'd really appreciate it. Oh, look, Eileen, I would, but you know what they're like. Just whatever you do, don't tell anyone how you found out. Please. Right, Amy's in bed. I'm going to watch TV and have an early night. You've got to be joking. You seem to need help packing, love. I... No! Look, there is taking liberties, darling. Then there is taking the... Oi, turn it in! Oh, she ain't gonna believe this. I don't believe this. Now that's what I call a welcome. Hmm. Not the usual class of gaff, Danny. Nice wine, though. Hi, I'm Tracy. This is my house. I'm the wife, and he wasn't expecting me. He didn't tell me you had a wife, Danny. Always forgets that bit, don't you? I think the phrase is bang to rights. No, no, I'm renting this place off her nan. Fully furnished, double bed, hot and cold running tart. Giving him his marching orders already, dear. Must be losing your touch. You normally keep him sweet longer than this. No, this is not what it looks like. You see, I am totally innocent. I promise, please tell her. Don't bother. I've heard all his excuses before. I'm straight back down that motorway. No, you're not. I'm not letting you go again. Well, you're not letting him off the hook that easily, I hope. You did come here to try again. If you're forgiving me. It's over with Vinnie, then. Vinny? Why are you two as bad as each other? I've never hit a woman before. Well, it's not me having the affair with Vinny. This has got nothing to do with Vinny. This is about me and you, babe. Stupid bitch that I am, I can't live without you. Me neither. Oh, excuse me, but this is still my house. I didn't know if I'd be welcome. My legs were shaking so much when I walked in. I needed that glass of wine. Have another. So I can't drive back? Have the old bottle. You're going nowhere. <laughs> Your face when you opened the door. I should have had a camera. <laughs> yeah. Martin, wait. I've uh, been seeing Cal and he's not going to make a complaint. I thought I told you not to. Well, thank you, would have done. Look, I'm serious. He wants to forget all about it. Yeah. Well, what he wants don't matter. Where are you going? Home. I've been suspended. <sighs> but Cal promised. Apparently, half the hospital saw what happened. And for those that didn't, he's recorded on security video. Do you want a copy? Well, you explained and told them what Cal did. I'm a senior nurse. 
Senior nurses can't go around beating up with stuff. What if I told him? I mean, I know the whole story. Oh, so right now you want to tell everyone, do you? Only not so long back. You couldn't even tell me. Are you expecting someone? No. Oh, I'll get it then. Right, let's get out of here. Come on. We've got the mics and we'll sort all this out in the morning. Uh, Danny, it's for you. Oh, pizzas, yeah. Two pizzas? Yeah, well, we've got this business sorted out. Tracy hadn't eaten. See, it's all heart, really. I forgot to pay. And what the hell's going on? Here's, uh, here's 20 quid. Keep the change. I'm sorry. She gone? Should have invited her in. Right, come on. Mike's. I'll drive. Come on. Uh... Give me the keys. Give me the keys. What about your clothes? I'll pick them up later. Oh, you're not stopping. That's a shame. There's enough pizza for three. It's not what you had in mind, I know, but... Get in the car. Right then, nice meeting you, but don't call again, eh? 